The first one is uh, from Daniel. He asked, Elon Musk and the SEC were back in the news when Musk tweeted how many cars Tesla would build in 2019, and the SEC sued him for violating its settlement with them. What is the SEC really after? Is this related to the Martha Stewart conviction? I mean, it's related to the Martha Stewart conviction in the sense that the SEC is, is very stringent on insider trading laws. And insider trading laws are unbelievably irrational. They're unbelievably illogical uh, and, and, and incredibly harmful the way they're practiced today. Martha Stewart was convicted because she got a tip from somebody who was unrelated to the firm, I think from her broker, and she traded on it and then she was convicted because she made money and what she should have known was inside information. But the whole definition of inside information is not objective. It, it, it's not clear in the law. And when Elon Musk says how many cars Tesla would build in a public statement, which is Twitter, how is that violating inside information? How is that manipulating the price when he's just conveying information to everybody? And if that information he believes to be true, if he is lying about the number of cars he believes, then he would be committing fraud. But this is, this is SEC. The SEC wants to control rigorously the flow of information from companies to the public it, it, and, and to particularly to specific publics, specific groups among the public. And it does sit this through massive bodies of regulation, including, including inside of trader regulations. I don't think there's any particular agenda item here other than it had a settlement with him that I think stated that he shouldn't make Public, inf public statements about the future of Tesla uh, through mechanisms like Twitter, and he violated it. But the public settlement was wrong to begin with, and the whole interest in this, in, in, in what he says and how he says it is, is wrong. It's none of the government's business unless they can show that he is committing fraud. And, and I don't think that's been the argument. Although, at one point, there was that argument that he was committing fraud. At one point, he said um, something like, and I'm paraphrasing, so don't, um, we, we, we're in nego serious negotiations to take the company public, private, private, which stock shares shot up. Now, was he really in negotiations? If he wasn't, and if it turns out that he said that in order to drive the price up and then he sold at the top, it, then there's a case for fraud or the case for he was trying to manipulate the stock for his own private gain and you could argue that shareholders should sue him. But if it's fraud, then the SEC has a role, then the government has a role. If it's just him trying to present information in, in a non-fraudulent way, but he's taking advantage of it in some way in his trading, that is more shareholder issue that should be settled in civil courts, the shareholders. So there's a whole issue. It's a whole issue that I, I think I've talked about in the past, but requires a significant chunk of time about insider trading laws. What is the fiduciary duty of a CEO to his shareholders? What should he disclose and what shouldn't he disclose? How should he disclose it? Is there any limits on how CEOs should trade stocks? All of these kind of things are interesting topics. And I think, you know, my conclusion is, that the government has very little role to play here, that most of this, other than, again, in, in, in real fraud, most of this would be decided in a rational market by the exchanges and by the contractual relationships between shareholders and management. And that all this can be settled through the market and through the legal system without the involvement of any kind of government entities, again, with the exception of actual fraud. Uh